Yep, we're good. Okay. So there you go. And start. Hasquail ech tenoya twites tenak quien quen shaman sis quien sna. Welcome to our Paname at Homolchitsen, also known as the Harmony Garden. And I'm sitting here in a little mini ecosystem with the camas and the buttercup and a nice little tiny Gary Oak. And these three are a plant guild. They all work together. They, they actually, you'll find them in complete ecosystems throughout Vancouver Island in the southern part of the island. A lot of Vancouver used to be covered in this particular ecosystem, especially around uh, where the village of Sanok is, also known as Vanier Park. And so these are a, a very ancient food. There are different types of camas and the ones, the most common ones you're going to find around the lower mainland and the Gulf Islands and Vancouver Island are the purple ones or the blue ones, the blue camas. And a lot of people when they come up, they think they're actually bluebells till the beautiful showy flowers come out and they start to see they're a whole different flower. And uh, the little stamens have yellow tips on them. And sometimes you don't notice them because they love to grow with their favorite plant, buttercup. So I'm really big on telling people that are trying to deal with their buttercup. I just try to encourage people to get camas seeds and throw them into their buttercup. Because we started out with maybe five or ten plants in here, and I think we probably now have about 20 or 30. We've never harvested them, but they're a food system that we uh, are encouraging and enhancing in this garden. And it's, it's no maintenance. You know, while everybody else is running around killing their buttercups and getting frustrated, we're throwing more, we're allowing these to keep seeding. So every year they get pollinated by our favorite little pollinators, mostly bumblebees, and they spread more seeds in here. And, uh, you know, we'd be happy if we had camas throughout this entire garden, to be honest. We have a lot of patches of, of, uh, of buttercup growing, so I think it would grow fine. And then these little Gary Oaks that grow very slowly, and you can see they have nice shiny leaves. So um, these are wonderful and uh, this one has been, you know, just slowly growing over about, I think it, this one's probably a, more of a 10 or 15 year old plant, but we've, uh, we probably got it when it was about five years old and it grew big enough and we're letting it increase. We also have a tiny little one, which I'll show you in a moment. But I really wanted you to see how nicely they work together and that this is actually an entire ecosystem. And so whenever people are asking me about buttercups, the first thing I say is get camas. Whether you can get the seedlings, mostly from places like uh, Van Dusen Gardens and um, UBC Botanical Gardens. Not a lot of people have them, so you have to actually go around and look for them. And I'm hoping at Wild Bird Trust, uh, Maplewood Flats, we can start getting camas going in our nursery to help spread that beautiful camas love. Um, for people that are painters and artists, it's going to be something that really catches your eye because I always tell people, especially young artists, your best uh, inspiration is nature. And when you look at how purple and yellow just pop together, in the sea of green and you know what's going on in here is a luscious ecosystem and everybody's supporting each other and the majority of the plants are the camas and the buttercup and as this gary oak gets big it, it has the potential to get about 20 or 30 feet high but it'll take several years to get there probably another decade or so and in the meantime the root systems of all these plants are intertwining and talking to each other. And, you know, it's great to know about indigenous plants and it's good to grow them. And another thing to learn is how to enhance what you already have. Because most people are lazy gardeners at heart and don't want to work hard. Now, I want, to, I want, to, want you to also note that we do not eat buttercup. 
It is strictly here, as they say, for the bees. And um, the camas, we could dig it up and eat the bulbs, which are about this big, and they kind of look like a small onion or shallot. And uh, so they're not huge, but they take several hours to cook. And so for Coast Salish peoples of different nations, we would have built a big uh, a pit to cook in, and we would throw a bunch of these in with, if we had enough chocolate lily roots, we'd throw those in. And if we had um, some shellfish and salmon, we'd throw all of that in and maybe some stinging nettle and uh, nodding onion for flavors and just let and you know we would line those beds uh we'd get the first of all we'd build our fire put a bunch of stones in there lava is always your best bet uh, river rocks work good too and then when they go down to just ashes and you have those hot rocks you throw a bunch of giant uh, uh, skunk cabbage leaves in there and then you put all your food in there and then you layer it up again with skunk cabbage on top fill that up with earth and let it cook for a whole day and night and then by the next day midday start digging everything out carefully and unearthing it and then you have a feast so you know we knew how to do it right especially at night you want to stay warm you got your glowing fire going and you you get all those uh, vegetables in there. They're steam cooking all night. Next day, you open that up and just in time for a nice brunch or early lunch or late lunch or early dinner and share it with your village. So that's the real way to get that done. And um, yeah, I hope that you're enjoying today's plant profile. We decided since we're doing three, we may as well put them all in one. and. You know there are seed pods that come out of these and then they spread and keep growing but our our biggest inspiration for um, for the buttercups was to start to reinstate an ecosystem that helps uh, people that come to this garden visibly see what a, a tiny ecosystem uh, looks like of these indigenous plants and just to remember it's not just in horticulture that we have companion plants. We have um, what we call a plant guild. Mostly you find that term in permaculture. So plant guilds, companion plants, they're all the same thing. They all help each other. Their roots talk to each other. The upper parts become a painting. I really like to appeal to those visual artists out there, the, you know, the watercolor artists. This is something that I hope you all feel very inspired by because they're so pretty. They are honestly some of my favorite plants. And um, sometimes camas can get quite high. It can get about this tall, so that's about two feet high. These ones seem to stay pretty low, but um, we're happy with them. They're very pretty. And you know, you find camas throughout interior and Coast Salish uh, environments. And for the West Coast, it's the ecosystem with the Gary Oaks that really work together. So I see lots of bird action on the little tree, even though it's so tiny. And um, I quite often, when I come in here late in the evening, there's bumblebees on everything in here. And so we're really happy about that. And we're just gonna keep nurturing this ecosystem. And um, yeah, here, there's a little, uh, seed pod for the buttercup again we don't eat them but they're a really vital important food for the pollinators and so i really encourage people with buttercup to find a, a better relationship with them because no matter how much you dig them up they're going to keep coming back uh, you don't always seed their seeds but you don't have to you know we don't have to eat everything we see i had a conversation with a friend recently where they were trying to explain to young people about uh, you know why we don't eat everything we see and so I said yeah I just tell people some some plants are only for birds and for bees they're not for humans at all and that's okay we get too human centric and I mean if you're a lot like me you want the birds and the bees around and you want to feel joy that 
the things you're doing are enhancing their environment and their living experience. And uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, being part of the wild bird and wild uh, pollinator corridors of wherever you're living. So yeah, I'm gonna show Nicole that pretty tiny little uh, Gary Oak that's about two arm lengths away from her. I'll come on over.